All right. So yeah, thank you to everyone who is able to join us. This is uh, another um, collaboration between the SAO and the ARC to uh, have questions answered for student organizations on campus for this uh, fall semester and uh, possibly for the spring semester as well. So thank you for joining us and I'll um, bring it up to the SAO folks. Um, I'll go ahead and introduce myself for those that don't know me. Uh, my name is Cassandra Salazar and I'm a student affairs specialist and I primarily work with diverse student organizations. Um, today we're going to focus more on fundraising and Zoe is the expert on that so she'll be presenting most of the time and I'll probably just share some extra information at the end. But thank you for having me. Awesome. And like Cassandra said, um, my name is Zoe. So I also work within the Student Activities Office. Um, my specific area of work is um, alumni relations. So helping students connect with the alumni that have graduated out of their organization, um, helping them fundraise, helping them keep communication, um, grow that friendship with their alumni, anything that falls under alumni relations. Um, so I'm very excited to be here today to talk to you all about fundraising and answer any questions you have. So I am just going to give a brief overview of the different avenues where you can get funding for your student org. And then if there's questions, I'm more than happy to answer those. Or if your organization wants specific details of how you can take that next step, um, I'd be more than happy to work with you through email. Um, so that would be the first way that we'll start off on our journey. And then I can work specifically with you on your organization's needs. Um, so I am just going to share my screen. Um, this is from a different presentation that had a little bit more um, different areas of alumni relations. So the top half of this current slide that I'm going to show might not make the most sense. Um, but let me just pull that up. Let's see. I don't know if I'm sharing the right screen. Can you all see um, the presentation, the PowerPoint? Awesome. And I'll just put it from here. Um, so basically when it comes to fundraising, you know, there's different opportunities for your organization to do local fundraising. So on campus between um, your current members, other people in the community that are on Purdue's campus. And there's also opportunity for you to reach out to the students that have gone through your organization you know, to bring up to them, you know, you had a great time when you were a student in my shoes, you know, would you like to contribute to the success for us to keep us to continue moving on. Um, so that's why this top half of the slide that you're currently looking at, you know, it says if you want to talk with your alumni and fundraise through them, um, having that constant communication. So if you've never sent a you know, update email to your alumni, um, just emailing them to ask if they would like to donate to you probably isn't the most, you know, successful avenue to start. You would want to start with that um, relationship building and contacting them a little bit more frequently before just asking them to donate to you. Um, so if that is a, you know, direction you do want to go with, our office can help you with requesting your alumni's emails, addresses, um, depending on if you want to email them or send them written communication. And so we can help you start to make that constant connection and constant um, you know update to them so that they'll become more comfortable with your organization and feel more in the know to be able to help you succeed um, and the other piece that goes along with that would be updating your websites and your social media accounts um, so no one's going to want to fundraise and no one's going to want to donate to your organization if you haven't updated it you know for the past three years um, so keeping sure that anything you're working on you know posting those updates anything you know new if you have a change in leadership share that information with your alumni showing them that you're working hard and you're working to be the best organization you can be that will definitely help you to be able to fundraise money from through them so to segue into more of the different areas that you can fundraise um, so some of those would be like skip a meals you can do a crowdfunding campaign you can do purdue day of giving if you've never participated in that and you can also create a general just giving link for your organization so um, just a little breakdown of the skip a meal. So you can partner with a local organization, or I'm sorry, a local food establishment, your organization can partner with them, um, pick a specific date and you can have a percentage of that proceeds from sales from that day get sent back to your organization. Um, you know, so if it's like 30% and someone sends $10 at the restaurant, your organization would get $3. And that's just a very simple way for you to have extra funds coming in. Um, you can do as many as you want with as many different food establishments as you want, as long as you can get their approval and get the schedule of this date, 
any proceeds that are sold in sales today are going back to my organization. Um, so you can work with student activities. You'll have to submit the activity planning form for us just to have knowledge that you're doing this activity. And you'll also need to communicate with the restaurant that you're looking to do. I know a lot of popular ones, um, students will do Chipotle and Panda Express. Those are the two that I've seen come through a lot on uh, Boiler Link recently. So those are two good ones to look into. You can also expand that opportunity and look at other restaurants, maybe that relate more with your organization um, and you know see what avenues are there with those. And so the other option mentioned on the screen is crowdfunding. So crowdfunding is similar to a GoFundMe page. Um, you have 28 days and you can just send your crowdfunding link to anyone you want. You can send it to family members if they want to donate. You can send it to your friends at different colleges if they want to donate. Um, just having this platform set up so that you can have this money income. Um, there is an application process that you would need to fill in. So if you are interested in starting a GoFundMe, or I'm sorry, a crowdfunding campaign um, for your organization, you can feel free to reach out to me through email and then I can help you with that application. It's going to ask you things like, you know, where are you spending your money? Why do you want the money? How is it going to benefit your organization? Um, you can get very creative with it. So I know right now um, Mortarboard is doing a crowdfunding campaign where all the money raised in that campaign is going to benefit the ACE Campus Food Pantry. Um, so, you know, you can raise that money and you can send it somewhere else or you can raise that money and have it for your own organization. I know a lot of other groups have also done um, COVID relief for their members. So getting extra money to be able to buy their members different supplies if they need supplies to be able to have a successful academic school year. So there's really a lot of opportunity and flexibility for what your organization is looking to have money for and looking to use that money towards. Um, so again, for that one, you'll just have to send me some communications and then I'll be able to help you go through the application process and make sure we're noting everything that needs to be noted in there. And then Purdue Day of Giving. Um, so if you've never participated in Purdue Day of Giving before, I would recommend that you do. It's a great opportunity. So registration usually happens around January and I do have a list of um, students that I will be reaching out to to remind them to register once registration is open. So if you want to be put on that list, again, let me know um, and I can add you to that list. So when it does open, I'll send those communications out. Um, but if you're unfamiliar with the day, it's a 24 hours that Purdue tries to raise as much money as we can through alumni, through um, you know, current students, through your families, any avenues that we think um, can bring that money back into our student organizations. So we love when student orgs participate. There are hourly challenges specific towards student organizations that um, kind of silly, but they're super simple. One of them, I think this past year was the 50th tweet posted in this hour. Um, so that one's kind of, you know, they're all kind of, of luck challenges and you just get extra funds. So if you are the recipient of one of the challenges, um, you know, you could get an extra $200, $500, I think up to a thousand depending on the challenge. So it's an easy way just to have, um, you know, more money flowing in. And it, since it is such a big day that a lot of our students and alumni know, a lot of people do wait till that day to um, donate to the organization if they do want to contribute a lot of money. But you shouldn't let Purdue Day of Giving hold you up from trying to do any fundraising. So, you know, like I mentioned before, crowdfunding, if it's something that you do want information on now, um, crowdfunding, we could start now. So it all just depends on which avenue you're going for, um, how soon you want the funds coming in and what type of participation you do want to have. And then I guess the last main big topic I can speak about is an organization giving link. So this would allow donors to give to your organization at any time. Um, so it's just one link. You can link it to your social media. If you have a website for your student organization, you can put it on there as well. Um, basically, if I was on your student organization's page and I was like, oh, I would love to donate to this group, um, and I saw that there was a giving link, I could click it and just donate right away. Um, or if you're emailing with someone and they say, hey, I'd love to give to the organization, send them that link and they can donate right through that. Um, super convenient for them. The only information that we'll need to be able to start setting it up is your organization's name and the Bozo account information you would want those funds deposited into. So if you don't have one set up, I would recommend doing that now. Um, so again, sending me an email. I know that's been mentioned a lot, um, but I will help you and take you and send you to the right hands that can help you with any of these different topics that you're interested in looking into. 
and making sure that it will get set up and will be working for you all. Um, and then I guess the last thing, and it wasn't mentioned on the slides, but you can also, you know, do a bake sale or some type of fundraising on campus, like a Penny Wars. I know that's pretty common to do. Um, currently with the new uh, restrictions and regulations due to the pandemic, we'll just have to alter how some of those things are happening. So if you are doing a bake sale or that's something you're interested in doing, um, you would just have to buy all the food prepackaged from the store. It wouldn't be able to be prepared by yourself um, at home. Or if you were doing a Penny Wars type thing and you were collecting people's spare change, you know, having gloves on and wiping down the change before you put it in the jar. I know some of the regulations seem a little silly, but student activities will work with you to make sure that you're following all the necessary steps and that we're making sure you have a successful event. Um, and also, if you have, you know, a specific idea in mind, you can reach out to student activities and we can help you um, with different avenues on how to do it. So I know a group reached out to me and they had said that they want to do like a live stream and depending on when people start donating, if they hit a certain amount, they'll do something, you know, some big, um, one of the students recommended like shaving his head if they reach a certain amount and it would be live streamed and like people could donate so that this student would shave all of his hair off. Um, so that's an avenue to do it too if you do want to get creative. And there's a lot of different opportunities. It's just looking at what your organization wants to do, what your goal is, and which route would be the best route for you to take. Um, so I'm more than happy if any of you have specific questions that you want to either talk about now or set up a meeting with me in the future, and we can go through specifics for your organization and plan. Um, I'll also put my email in the chat, um, and I can say it out loud so you have it. It's Z Stoudy is my last name, so it's Z. S-T-A-U-D-E, and it's also on the Student Activities website, which is helpful. You can look me up there. Um, just make sure I spell the right before I put it in there. And basically anything that you want to talk further on, um, want more information on, I'd be happy to help. So feel free to send an email at any time. Uh, I know I talked kind of fast, something I'm working on, slowing down a little bit. So if anyone has questions now, I'd love to help answer them. Um, can be generic, can be specific, whatever is best for you. So I have a question. So for one of the examples you mentioned, um, the opportunity to partner with a local food establishment for the uh, fundraising, uh, would that also apply to drink like beverage companies? Or because uh, I know Purdue has like so like a collaborative like a partnership with Coca-Cola. Um, so those would definitely be looked at on a case by case basis, which is why we would require the activity planning form. So just making sure that um, if there is a specific place, sending that into us, and then we'll be able to see, you know, does it align with um, all the regulations that we have and the food vendors that we're able to work with. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I also want to add in um, today the SAO on the SAO social media platforms. We actually promoted um, the new coffee shop inside the union now has um, a program where you can set up a date and time for them. And I believe it's 10% of all the sales during that time um, will go to your student work. So if you're interested in that, please um, check that out on our social media. And then Manabu, I will send that to you and Pam directly after this meeting. Yep, and I can also share, um, I can send through email, I guess a, a brief overview of what I talked about today so that way you have it all written out in the steps if someone does reach out to you and says, you know, I wanna do this, that way you could just have all the information to share with them and then direct them to who needs to be contacted. Thank you very much. Yeah. I have a question about your, um, the example you gave. So sure. if we did do something like a live stream, what would be the best way to like tell people where to donate? Would, um, would that be an example of where you would use the organization giving link or would you re recommend using something else? Yeah, so you could do the organization giving link um, and tie that in. So again, it would need an activity planning form just so student activities knows what you're doing. Um, but if you have that organization giving link, it does give you that flexibility of, hey, we're doing this event today. Um, you know, here's the link that you can donate to us. If you wanted it to be 
a longer period of time, maybe looking at a crowdfunding campaign. So if you wanted it to be over 28 day span and you know, maybe once a week doing a live portion of it and saying, oh, this week we raised this much, like here's what we'll do. Um, so there's two different options, but I would definitely say the giving link would probably be the easier route to go if you just had one you know, two hour session of a live stream. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, kind of going off of that question, would the giving link be valid for the, like, valid the whole year or like kind of like until the org is not no longer an org? Yeah. So once you have one, you shouldn't have to make a new one. Um, and if it turns out that, you know, you don't think you have one and then we start the process and we find out that you do have one, we'll just be able to share that information with you of what the link is. Um, so our office doesn't have record of the links. Mm -hmm. That is all through the Student Life Development Office. We work with them just to make sure they have all the information to set up the link and then we can work with them to see if there is one already established for your organization. I see. So for that one, um, so I know some student orgs have a little bit of a challenge of raising funds through like the traditional means where they need like either cash or checks. But so if a student org used that link, then people could use their credit card to donate or give money that way, correct? Yes. Okay. Yep. Sounds great. I'm not really sure if there's any other questions, but uh, anyone is welcome to ask questions. <laughs> and like I said, you know, we can get creative with your fundraising efforts. So you don't just have to do a crowdfunding campaign and hope for the best. Um, if you decide that's the route that your organization wants to take, that's something that I can work with you to establish a game plan of, you know, on Tuesday, we're going to table and tell people we're doing this crowdfunding campaign and like show them where they can donate. Or on this week, we'll send an email out to our alum and just say, hey, we're raising money and this is why we're doing it. Um, so, you know, we're not just going to say like, good luck, go do it yourself. I am more than happy to help you set up a game plan and work with you to make it successful. We want the best for your organization and what's going to bring in the most for you. Um, so we are here as a resource. We are here to help. And like I said earlier, I know this was a general broad overview and just depending on what the organization's looking for and what their end goal is, it'll help once we start that communication on the more personal level to be able to get you to the place you need to be at. I just got a question um, that's just into me. So they're wondering about online auctions. Uh, are student orgies allowed to do that and uh, how would that work? Is if online options for just online auctions, like auctions. Oh, auctions. Yep. Um, so they are doable. I haven't had a lot of experience with them, but I know student orgs have worked with Bozo. Mm -hmm. um, Bozo has a really good resource for what platforms to do student auctions through. Um, so that is something that I can look into more and definitely follow through with more information for you. And then otherwise, if someone wants an answer today, they can definitely reach out to Bozo and Bozo should be able to help them um, with the platform that they recommend using. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. And I do want to say that even for those 100% online auctions, you do need to submit an activity planning form for those. Are there any general questions? Um, they don't have to be fundraising um, questions, any SAO questions, we're happy to help you with that too. Um, I guess I just wanted to clarify. So when we're fundraising and like collecting money, is there no other online platform that we're allowed to use just like within small groups, I guess, and then donating into like an organization giving link or just all of them should just be rounded there. So any um, fundraising avenues do need to be approved by the university. So crowdfunding is approved by the university. Um, your giving link is approved by the university and um, like general like PDOG. So if you are trying to raise funds that will get donated, that's either something we'll have to work with Bozo on, you know, where are you collecting those funds through and how are you transferring those over? So for the example I gave earlier about Mortarboard, um, 
they were trying to host a Penny Wars, but since everything with the pandemic, they wanted to make it an online option of a Penny Wars. And so that's why they're using the crowdfunding platform because they thought that that would best suit their needs. Um, other orgs just do like a two hour event on a weekend or on a weekday to fundraise money to send somewhere else. Um, but again, that's a whole just working with us on a case by case basis of what best works for you. Um, but I know that like Venmo is not an option that is suitable for student orgs. And if you do conduct business through Venmo, um, that most likely will not get approved just because it's Bozo's policy that um, Venmo is not used. And I know students can do um, purchasing options or, you know, gain money through Cool. So the Cool system, um, students have done it that way, where if someone wants to donate, they can donate to this specific Cool storefront, um, even though they're not purchasing. And then that money can then get taken to put somewhere else if you do want to donate that to someone else. I also, sorry, I just keep hearing these conversations and I think of common questions. I um, hear from students or things I see that should be done. Um, please do not use Venmo or Cash App for any kind of transactions. Um, don't use that. I see that a lot to collect money, whether that's dues or merchandise. Please do not be using Cash App and Venmo. I feel like I keep putting out all of these rules. <laughs> Sorry. Are there any other questions? I think right now we're out of questions, but yeah, thank you so much for joining us for this um, program where, where we can share more information to our student or just about, um, today specifically about how to do better for fundraising and those kind of topics. So thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Glad to be here. And like I said, and I know I've mentioned it multiple times, um, I'm always available if you want to send an email and I can talk further if you have follow-up questions you think of an hour from now. Um, definitely send an email and I will respond to you and make sure you get all the information that's needed. Sounds great. So our next um, event or next uh, Zoom session with SAO is on, uh, let's see, October 19th. So uh, we have another couple, two weeks until then. So if you have any questions in the meantime, you can feel free to email us at the ARC or SAO directly. So yeah, and SAO, you also have um, regular Zoom hours as well, correct? Yep, so we have Zoom hours Monday through Friday, 9 to 4.30. Um, Wednesday, they start a little later, I believe. Do they start at 11, so? 12.30? 12. <laughs> On Wednesdays, 12.30. 1230. I apologize. Um, but yeah, so you can always um, go on there, drop in. You don't have to have an appointment or anything like that. Ask any kind of questions. Um, but we're also available for one on one appointments anytime that you can schedule through us on Boiler Connect, the same way you would schedule an appointment with your advisor. Um, so we're here to help you um, any way that we can. All right, so I'm going to stop the recording. So thank you all for joining us today.